And if you are um, already logged in, it may give you a, a warning message. You can just click, click continue on that. Uh, and if not, you're going to have to log in. So I'm assuming at this point you've already logged in and you're at the screen where you can create a new project. So we're going to go ahead and start a new project. And every time I click on this, I seem to miss. There we go. We're going to call this hello per, and you can't put a space in the name, so I had to put those together. It's not a mistake. After clicking OK, that should bring us to the window that allows us to build our application for an Android device. Uh, so here's what our window looks like. It's very blank right now. On the left side are interface elements that we can add to it, like buttons, sliders, text labels, date pickers, all kinds of cool things. For the Hello Per project, we're going to need a button, which I will just grab uh, and drag on to the window and release. So here's my button. Uh, some things about this button, I would actually like there to be the picture of the cat on this button so we can click on the cat. The way you're going to get a cat to show up on this button is on the right side you get all the information about that button, including what the image is, which is none right now. So if I click on it, I can upload a file, and I can choose that file to be the kitty picture. So you just have to select the file that you had just downloaded, and then hit OK. It'll upload it, and then there's our cat. Oh, but there's this text over the cat picture. I don't like that. So over here, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see there's a text section, and you can just delete all that text. You know, update now, and we now have a cat without text on top of it. That's great. All right, so the next thing I want to have in our Hello Per project is a label that allows us to give directions to the user. And what I'd like it to say is, pet the cat. Or actually, I like pet the kitty better. Yay, it says pet the kitty. But it's really not big enough, so I'm going to change the font size to be size 36. Oh, much better. And it doesn't stand out enough, so I'm going to make it bold. I'm going to change the background color to be cyan, and I'm going to change the text color. Oh, what would be a good text color? Hmm, magenta. Oh, there we go. Now that's a Pet the Kitty app. All right, we're almost done with the interface. Uh, there's one more thing we need, and that's the sound effect. So I'm going to go down here under the media section, and you'll see there's a sound area. You want to drag that onto the uh, window, anywhere really, and it'll pop up down here at the bottom, and it's a non-visible component because you can't see the sound. Uh, but we need to set what its source is going to be. Where is the sound going to be coming from? So click on the source area, and it's not coming from the picture. Uh, click on Upload File, and now we're going to choose that other file we downloaded called meow.mp3. It'll take it a moment to upload it, and now we're going to have that as our source of our sound effect. So we are now done uh, building the interface. You're more than welcome to play with any of the other settings that you would like. The next thing we need to do to make this an interactive program is go to the block section. You'll see that under screen one there are three things that relate to the three items we added to the components window. The button, the label, and the sound. And we can use those to make our program interactive. If you go to button one, you'll see an option here called when button one is clicked. I'm going to drag that over and drop it in the uh, blocks window. Now when this button is clicked, whatever is in the do section will be executed or run. So what I'd like to have happen is for a sound effect to be played. So I'm going to take the sound, which I just added to the design window, and I'm going to play it. And it needs to lock in here just like that. And you should hear a clicking noise, uh, just like a Lego piece. And that's it. Our program is ready to go. So now the only way to run it is one of two ways. One is if you have an Android device, you can actually get it to run on your Android device and in your hand and see what it does. Uh, to do that, you're going to have to go under the build settings and use the QR code uh, option here, the first one. Um, that's something that you'll have to look in another tutorial or, or ask someone else on how to go through all those steps. But what I will show you right now is if you don't have an Android device, is how to run the emulator on your computer. So you're going to go under the Connect window and select Emulator. 
and here's my emulator, it's up and running. Uh, this takes a little while, and that message is very truthful, to get up and running. We're, uh, we're essentially simulating a cell phone now on your computer, and that can, can take a little while to get working. So right now, you, you've got essentially a pretend cell phone, and you just sit here and wait a second while it's getting ready. It's going to wait 20 seconds uh, to make sure the cell phone is properly booted up. And once that's done, it's then going to run your program on the cell phone uh, simulation. Uh, if there are any directions here that come up that you're confused about, uh, you can look online for the directions for walking through the setup of the emulator. Uh, here it goes. It's almost ready. The companion app is running. Uh, in about two seconds, it's going to send the cat app to the emulator and... Is it a cat? It's a cat. And then if I click on the cat, you can hear it purring. Oh, what a good cat. And that's our app. It works. Now, there are other features we can add to this, too, if you want to play around. Um, so, for example, let's see if I can figure out where this is. I think there's a way to make things vibrate. Oh, yeah. So you can see there's a vibrate option right here. And I could put that in here. And I have to say for how long it's going to vibrate. So I need an amount of time. And if I remember right, if I just type in the number 5 here, and drop it there, I can make the phone vibrate. Now, unfortunately, the emulator <laughs> won't vibrate. I, I don't know why it won't vibrate. It makes sense for it to just kind of shake a little bit. But if you have an actual Android device and you run your app on that, it'll vibrate now when you click on the button. What's really cool about this program is when you make changes in the design or the block view, those changes happen live right here on the screen. So, for example, I'll show you here in the design area. If I change the uh, background color here to be blue, which won't be easy to see, and then I go here, oh my goodness, it's already changed to blue. You can see your changes live happening on the Android device. So there you have it. We have a working Hello Pura uh, program. I hope you enjoy this little tutorial.